Okay, Facebook, thank you so much for joining me and watching my little video. I know that I haven't done a video in so long, but nevertheless, here I am. And I know that you guys have missed me. You can never get too much of Mildred Kimberly Don Lee. Yes. So uh, one of the things that I wanted to share with you this afternoon is the church covenant. As many of you as... As many of you know, I do usher it uh, within my church, and that church is Temple Church International. And as an usher, one of the duties that we do is uh, we sweep the church, which means after church service is over with, we go behind the pews, check and make sure um, there's no debris left behind, babbles, and everything is in place, and everything just ready for um, the next um, service and the next worship. So I take pride in that. One of the things that I picked up was the church covenant, this little thing right here. And actually, I was trying to find the hymn book that it came out of, but I could not find it. And there are some things that I just won't throw away. I will never throw away a Bible. I will never throw away anything that, that is that sacred and that um, valuable and that is life and everything. Um so I picked up the church covenant, couldn't find out where it belonged. And so I just stuck it in my purse and brought it on home. I read over it a little bit. I tossed it around in the bedroom. I tossed it around in the living room, just kind of reading it and trying to ask myself, okay, Kim, why are we not reading this any longer? And, um, and everything, especially after rereading re it and becoming um, more familiar with it, because um, I think the last time that I read it, I was so young and everything, not really knowing the seriousness really of it and the value of the um, church covenant. So I'll read it with you, and um, some of the things that I share will be also a reminder to some and maybe a conviction to others. And um, maybe we all can get on the same page. And and actually, I went online to print off a better copy so that I could read with clarity to you guys. And there are so many breakdowns of the church covenant. So I know that tonight I'm not going to do it justice, but I'll definitely give you um, what I have and... Um, and then we go forth from there. So I will read it. It's called the Church Covenant. Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we do now in the presence of God in this assembly most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage therefore by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness and in comfort to promote its prosperity and spirituality to sustain its worship, its ordinances, discipline, and doctrines to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotions, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our deportment, to avoid all tattling, backbiting, and excessive anger, to, to abstain from the sale of and use of intoxicating drinks such as beverage, to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember one another in prayer, and to aid one another in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy and feeling and Christian courtesy and speech, to be slow to take offense but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior, to secure it without delay. We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of the word of God. Amen. So that is the church covenant. And when I started reading it, I was like, oh my God, I haven't read that thing in so doggone long. 
But then when I started to break down some key things that were kind of sticking out to me, I was like, wow, that's kind of like our foundation. And then so many, so many of us, we've gotten away from it. And that's kind of like, um, kind of scary. So it's not so much of the, that. I'm not saying that we should actually every Sunday just stand up and read the church covenant and everything. Um, but we definitely want to make sure that there is a foundation of these principles and everything within the body of Christ and everything. Um, my church is um, covenant. Well, I won't say covenant, but our, um, oh Lord. That's the word that I'm looking for and I can't find it. But our belief is that we are the people that get to know God better, get to know each other better, and then help the world get to know God better through us. That's our belief in everything. And <clears throat> founded in that belief are the covenant principles and everything. Uh, so one of the things that I want to, first of all, um, point out is having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on a profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we do now in the presence of God in this assembly most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. <clears throat> okay, so to me what I took, about, took away from this was that it's all about mainly what is, what is your belief? What do you believe when it comes to your church? Do you believe? Are you, do you feel connected to the ministry? So connected that you can stand on it and that you can um, say, look, this is my church. I am proud where we are at and where we're going. And God is not finished with us yet because I believe. I believe in the ministry. I believe in the method. I believe in the people. I believe in the message and I believe in God. And I know that we are following after God. Um, without that foundation of belief, you're just showing up and you're showing up and you're just kind of like there in everything. And you want to be a place, especially when you're going to church, you want to go to church where you can say without a shadow of doubt that you believe what you believe and you believe in the ministry that you are um, connected to. If you can, if you are not connected to a ministry that you can believe in, then you need to go find a ministry that you can unite with and um, stand and say, look, this is my ministry. I'm a part of this church and I believe it in everything. And so, but I digress off of that and everything. But um, the first principle is for me was your belief system. Do you believe in it? Doesn't have to be perfect. Um, one of the things that I was thinking about was um, Mr. Kirk Franklin. I listen to his music a lot and I listen to um, Minister Smallwood's music a lot and everything. These gentlemen, in my taste, okay, cannot really, really sing, but their belief is in the message. When they are directing and when they are ministering, they believe. So it's not so much of that they can sing, they believe in the message. And then when they believe in the message and they are convicted, guess what? People that are that's singing for them, guess what? They believe. And then in, the, and in turn, the people are blessed because why? That foundation of belief. You can. I don't believe that you can be a part of that choir um, from um, Minister... Um, Kirk Franklin and Minister um, Smallwood, and I do call them ministers, um, and you don't believe because there has to be conviction because every time that someone in that choir opens up their mouth and sing, you feel it. You feel that they believe in everything and um, they are bigger. They're part of a bigger purpose. So we have to also believe that um, this is our stand. We believe in the um, Lord Jesus Christ. We believe that he rose. He died. He rose on the third day. And we also believe that he's coming back. And then not only that, we are also to believe that we are to occupy until he returns in everything. So forget the ambulances and everything. Maybe that was a warning that God said, Kim, slow down a little bit. So uh, we'll pray for those people and pray that they're okay and everything. So, But uh, once again, it's based on your belief. What do you believe? Do you believe in your ministry? 
And if you believe in it, you will support it and everything. So I'll let that go. And then it also say we engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness and comfort, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship ordinances, discipline and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to support the ministry the expenses of the church and the relief of the poor and the spread of the gospel through all nations. Like I said, it's all about, once again, what do you believe in everything? If you believe um, in your church, and I pray to God that you do, that you are going to be found doing those things. You're going to be found um, trying to strive for the advancement of your church and everything. And... You're going to follow its decrees, its laws. You're going to show up when you're supposed to show up. And the only time that you don't show up is when you really you just can't show up and everything. Other than that, then you should be there. Be a part of what's going on and everything. And because it says to um, regularly to support the ministry and everything. So you want to be there. You want to um, always kind of. Um, be there. I could do better in my support and everything because I don't go every time um, that there is a function and everything. Not that I don't believe. It's just that sometimes i um, just lazy. And then sometimes I am busy. Sometimes I have to study. I, I go to school as well. But at the same time, God knows and trust me, God does know when we can and when we actually just can't. And so we want to make sure that we are um, contributing cheerfully to the ministry and so that the ministry can go past our walls and then also um, generate enough um, revenue, be it spiritually or financially, that it can reach um, the poor and it can take the um, gospel to the next level and everything. But you also, you have to, in order to um, promote it and everything and believe in it and, and advance it, you have to be convicted by it. You have to know that what you're doing is for um, the kingdom. One of the things I always tell myself is the only thing that what the, on, the only things that you do for Christ will last. A lot of times we do a lot of things, and at the end of the day, when it's all said and done and over with, if what you're doing is not about saving souls, then you are wasting time. Not saying that we should be walking around beating people down with the Bible or anything like that. But a lot of times if, let's say, um, let's say in our day-to-day -day walk, we're convicted about something we thought. We um, acted out towards somebody that maybe we shouldn't act, we shouldn't, we shouldn't have acted that way toward. Something that was, you may have said something unkind to somebody. And, but if you're convicted and that conviction changes your heart and pricks you, then you are to go to that person and say, you know what? Hey, I'm sorry. That wasn't God-like. That wasn't Christ-like. And that's not like me. That way, trust me, slowly but surely, guess what? We are winning souls. Someone is saying, you know what? She or he might be a little cray-cray, but they ain't all that bad. They, they love God and everything. And um, in turn, you generally start turning people's minds and your and their hearts toward you and then in turn and so toward you guess what you're pointing back up to the savior because at the end of the day if we're not saving souls guess what it's all in vain all in vain all in vain we all have something that we can do to contribute to the advancement of the kingdom you just have to look inside your heart and in your hand and say what well, god what is my gift what do I have within myself that I can advance the kingdom, that I can advance my local church and everything? We don't have to, it don't have to be something um, just totally, um, I guess, so noticeable. I don't know. The, um, but what you, what you do know and what you do have and what you, the gift that you do have is if it's the gift of love, then guess what? Love people. Just simply love them. Be kind to them. If you are going to the store and someone need help, someone is digging for change in front of you, and you know you have it, give it. That's advancing the kingdom. As quiet as it is kept, guys, we are still in a war. We are still in a war. And every day, we ought to be trying to find a way to reach 
a soul to reach a soul to bring somebody in by our character by our demeanor by our um our speech um uh well i don't say speech I guess speech is the right word. Articulation of speech? I'm not sure. But anyway, we should be finding a way that we can reach others so that someone lost can say, you know what? Hey, they're going through, but they're still holding on. They're going through, but they're still saying, hey, my God is real. My God is alive. My God saves. So that's what we want to be finding ourselves doing and, and looking within yourself. If you don't know what your gift is, ask God. To show you my gift is a gift of service I love to serve if I'm not serving then I feel so uncomfortable my life is about service I love to serve if someone needed me to drop down and dust the dirt off their shoes guess what I do it take no thought for from it that's just who I am. That's just what I do. I, it, does, it does not matter. The only time that people wrestle with stuff like that is, and that's doing, I guess, what they call the little small task and everything that don't make them seem higher, is pride. When you, have, when you have pride, then trust me, there are certain things that you are just not going to do because why? You are too high. You are, too, you are above all of that and everything. And that will never, I pray to God that that will never, ever be my case. My gift is service. If you ask me to do something or if I think that you might need it, guess what? I'm serving. I'm looking for a way to serve. That's just how I am. Um, so I'll let that go. But like I said, find within yourself to contribute back. A lot of times we overlook our um, gifts and everything and we think that it's not enough and everything. It's not enough if you don't use it. It's not enough if you don't try. 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 That's all. And then you will see that in your effort, somewhere, someone was made better. And then on the inside, you were made better as well. So it's all in trying. When you don't know, guess what? It don't hurt to try. It does not hurt to try, especially when you are trying with a pure heart, no motive, and you are doing it so that God would get glory. So I will digress and move on past that. Um, it also says we also engage to maintain family and secret devotions to religiously educate our children to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances. Um to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements. Basically, we want to make sure that we are at all times mindful of God. We want to be mindful of God's presence. We want to be mindful of the Holy Spirit within us. And we also want to um, make sure that we pull out time excuse me make time sorry for the things of God we want to make sure we do that um, you're being made the better it's nothing like looking at the Bible for yourself reading the Bible for yourself whether you right wrong or indifferent if it's wrong guess what um, I think it was um, my grandmother or someone said that it'll come out in the wash or the rinse one way or the other it'll get straightened out in time but still um Practice reading. Practice reading the Bible. Um, one of the things that I do, um, well, I don't do. My pastor, his name is Bishop Kevin L. Long. He has his Instagram page. And he has these um, memes that he come up with. And then he also has like a correlating um, scripture that associates with the menace, with the uh, meme. A lot of times I will read it, analyze it, see how... It ties back to the memory and everything, and then whether I agree with it, don't agree with it, I may put it out there, I may not put it out there, um, but that's kind of like my, um, that's like my Bible study and everything, and trust me, he does it every day, and the thoughts are so thought-provoking, trust me, that's, that's pretty much for me, I'm not going to say good enough, because it's spiritual, but yet and still, um, for me, it's a start, it's a start to be able to, um, look at it and everything and he posts them every day um 
And if you look at the Mimi and you see like a common, it's like a common statement tied to a, um, tied to a scripture and you can read it and, you know, think about it, ponder it, over ponder it like I often do. But yet and still every day I'm getting um, an opportunity to read the word of God. Every day I'm getting an opportunity to study, may not comment on it or anything like that. Um, cause sometimes, um, based on what he say, um, I may agree, may not agree. And then if I put it out there and it's all torn up wrong, then it's out there, but yet and still, that's my way of, um, getting, you know, the word of God in and also getting the opportunity to study. And, um, also I listen to, um, gospel music sometimes <laughs> and a lot of times that ministers to you as well and those are the things that we want to have those secret devotions those times that we can talk to God and and fellowship and commune with God and everything and trust me God is not sitting high so high that he can't hear us and we have to um go to him in some other foreign uh, as some other foreign entity, God wants us to communicate with him just as we are, where we are at and everything. So one of the things when I talk to God, of course, it's with reverence and of course, it's with um, love and respect and a humbling, humbling place. Because um, I even know without the grace of God, oh my gosh, where would I be? So when I talk to God, I'm talking to God as in, Father, please help me. Help me understand, give me clarity, show me how I can make me better. How can I make me more effective in this world and everything? And that does not, I don't have room, my world, I don't have room to put on air and pretend with God and be and come to God as someone that I'm not. And I don't suggest that you are too, that you do that either. God is holy. God is just. And when we go to God, he knows when we are on point and he also knows when we are just really, really neat and just really to be quiet and just sometimes sit in his presence and everything because we cannot um, snowball God. We cannot tell God it was them when we know good and well it was us. So one of the things that we want to do is make sure that we um, get our secret devotions in and religiously educate our children and maintain um, um, the times that we share with the family as far as uh, those secret devotions as well. One of the things that we are not doing so much of is educating our children. I won't say all, so I don't. everyone don't think that's everybody, but some of us are getting away from that. One of the things that I'm beginning to see, because this is the day and age of technology, I am actually seeing where children are coming um, to services um, with headphones on. Headphones are, I guess, is kind of like they're maybe playing a game, maybe playing an app or something like that. Whatever they're doing, the goal is, I would hope that the goal is, is for the children not to be a distraction during service. So what we are doing, not just us, not TCI, so everybody calm down, but uh, what we are doing across um, the world, we are giving these children technology and putting headphones on and distracting them because we don't want them to be a distraction. But Father God, in the name of Jesus, how damaging is that? So... With that being said, it's kind of like, how will they hear without a preacher? And how will they preach unless he be sent? But the thing is, the children are not hearing. They're not hearing because we are covering up their ears. And that is so destructive. Only because we are in a war. We are in a war. And the enemy want our children at a young age and everything. So... And I, I will back off that a little bit. I'm just saying, you guys, when you cover up their ears, you are doing so much damage. You're, I'd rather the children sitting in church trying to learn church discipline, um, church etiquette, I guess, um, versus children 
with headphones over their ears. As a young child, and I'll share my little testimony, a little short one. As a young child, my mother kept us in church. I thank God for that. And she also disciplined us in church, meaning if the man of God is up preaching, you do one thing, you sit up, you be quiet. There's no plan, there's no talking, there's none of that. You're just sitting there and you're going to be quiet. So every Sunday, I would sit there. Of course, I was a good little girl. I would sit there and I would be quiet. And I would listen. And my pastor at that time, his name is um, Pastor MacArthur Hicklin. Um, to God be the glory for him. Wonderful pastor. Uh, but I would sit there as a young girl and just watch him. Listen. And But one day, it's, I caught on and everything. And I would actually start hearing him. And I would remember him saying, if I have to preach to rocks in these chairs, I would. And he meant that. And from then on, I found my foundation of, hey, this is life. This word is life. He is preaching and teaching something passionately about something that he believes in. And slowly but surely, guess what? I started getting in line with that. I started um, listening to him and everything. And then once that started happening, I started developing my own relationship with God. Because I was saying, God, teach me how, teach me your word. I want to know your word. I want to know how to read it. I want to know what it means. I want to know how to um, interpret the scriptures and everything. And But that came because why I was sitting there listening. I was sitting there listening. I didn't have anything over my ears as a distraction. I did not do that to my children. Now, if they do something crazy and they go astray and everything like some youth will. And um, guess what? That foundation is there. That foundation is there. They're not going to go so far that the grace of God won't reel them back in and everything. The worst thing that we can do is take that ammunition away from our children. We are not going to be here forever for them. We are not going to be in every situation with them. They're going to have to know God for themselves. But if we do not give them that foundation to know that when something is... Um, going to rise something that's off kilter to call on the name of Jesus, then guess what? We're doing them a disservice. I don't care if a child interrupts service that much to the point that we got to put an earphone on their ears. No, 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 no. That's church discipline. They'll get it. They will get it. But we, they won't get it if we cover up their ears. We cover up their ears. We cover up their spirits. We cover up their life from the blood. We ain't going to say from the blood of Jesus. But we, co we, we do damage that could be um, prevented. And yeah. So yeah. Sorry about that, guys. I will digress. I'm just saying... Um, Part of bringing the children up in church, rearing the children up in church, is bringing them up in church, teaching them in church and everything. And the headphones on the ears, that's so wrong on so many levels. So wrong on so many levels. But I digress. I digress. Um, so, back to the church covenant. Um, to definitely... Um, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances and to walk carefully in the world to um, be just in our dealings dealings and basically be an example just be an example where someone can see you and um, you're pointing back to Christ I would like to think that even on my worst days on a day that I was probably not even nowhere near my best I don't I ain't going to say I can't fall that far, but I would like to think at all times, some kind of way, I'm pointing back to um, the Savior. I don't believe that I can get um, that far gone, that intoxicated, that, um, I don't know, um, I don't think I can go that far that I can't come back to God um, or I won't point to the cross and everything. I remember one time I was in a club and... Um, yeah, little me, sweet. <laughs> I know. But I was in a club and 
one of the things that I do is if I sit there and everything and I check out my surroundings, of course, and because a lot of times I went by myself and I would check out my surroundings and then I would kind of um, see who's who's who and check out their spirit and talk to them and everything. And first of all, I want to know, basically, are you saved? Not that my goal was there to save you. I'm just talking about just for myself. I want to know what kind of person you are. Because if you are confessing the Lord Jesus Christ, then trust me, some of those fruits are going to um, come spilling out your mouth and everything. Especially if you're um, drinking and stuff like that. Ooh. Yeah. But one of the things that we want to do is just really be an example. No matter where we're at, no matter what we're doing, be an example. Be an example and everything point back to the cross always 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 don't ever be caught off guard where you can't be you can't point back to the cross never ever put yourself in a position where you are so lifted in pride or you're feeling so low down and dirty that you can't um point back to the cross it's at the cross you know when we first saw the light and everything and you know the rest of the song just rolled away and everything so but um you always want to uh, walk carefully and be an example and stuff like that um so by now as believers especially with adult grown believers and been saved for so long there's certain things that we should not be doing and everything but when you find yourself doing those things just remember at the end of the day hey to god be the glory we're in a war and um there are souls that still need to be saved so don't get caught up that you can't come back and say god forgive me and everything so we'll move on from that oh so it also says um to avoid all tattling backbiting excessive anger to abstain from the sale and use of intoxicating drinks as beverage to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our savior wow that's a lot so basically don't be in a church causing confusion. You know, don't do that. And because no one's edified when confusion is there. No one goes to church to be in an environment where there is confusion. And there is a spirit of um, um, anger or hostility and everything no one wants that that's why when we greet people at the door we greet them with a smile we greet them with hugs and everything we want to we want to make them feel at home even whether they are seasoned saints there or visitors or babes or whatever teens we want to make sure that they feel like they are at home but they can't feel that way if we um create an environment that says something totally totally um different so at all times make sure that your demeanor and everything hey that you are showing the love of god and everything and that you're not creating an environment that's going to be toxic um for others and everything one of the things that um 